Let me start right from the beginning again. Yeah. Uh, this is Dr. Scott Lively. I'm from the United States. I've come here uh, to work against the anti-discrimination law uh, that is based on sexual orientation. Uh, I have credentials in international human rights. I'm an attorney and a pastor. I hold a doctor of law, a doctor of theology, uh, and special credentials in international human rights from Strasbourg. Uh, I have been studying the problem of the homosexual political agenda for 20 years uh, and have been involved in standing for uh, religious freedom and family values in 40 countries. Uh, today in your country there is an attempt to push this anti-discrimination law and, uh, and I must tell you it's an extremely dangerous law. Uh, and the reason being that uh, an anti-discrimination law puts the power of the government and the power of the law into the hands of homosexual activists in order to push their agenda uh, in your country. And the anti-discrimination law is like the seed that contains the entire tree of the homosexual agenda. And I'll explain that in a few moments, but just understand that Every country that has adopted an anti-discrimination ordinance based on sexual orientation uh, has then suffered uh, gay pride parades, uh, gay adoption, uh, gay marriage, and the indoctrination of school children with homosexual propaganda. There are other things as well, but those are the four big ones uh, that uh, you will see happen in your country. I guarantee you, if you adopt, if your country votes for the anti-discrimination law, uh, you will have a gay pride parade this summer, and it will be protected by the police, and the citizens will be able to do nothing about it. Uh, and that will be just the beginning. Uh, why is this? Because discrimination, the, the logic of discrimination, as a word, it means to, uh, to disapprove of something. And uh, what an anti-discrimination law does, it says that it's illegal to disapprove of something. Well, uh, when, it's, uh, when it's a matter of race or skin color or gender, then uh, there should be no disapproval of those things. There's no reason to, be, to disapprove of somebody because of the color of their skin. It's irrational. Uh, there's, uh, there's no reason to be against somebody because they're a woman or because they're a man. Uh, or because they were born in a certain country. Those things are completely morally neutral. But sexual orientation, and that word means, that phrase, uh, was created to hide a category of sexual conduct. Homosexuality, uh, transgenderism, uh, and even uh, different forms of sexual perversion. All of those things amount to conduct, it's behavior. And behavior has moral and health consequences. It's not the same thing as racism to be against homosexuality. And so an anti-discrimination policy based on sexual orientation says that you as a citizen and your government will not be allowed to disapprove of homosexual conduct. And once that happens, that gives the power of the law all the force of law, all the power of government, it puts it in the hands of homosexual activists who have a strategy and an agenda to take control of the society. Now, this is a conflict uh, between two different views. The one view is the, the biblical and the traditional view that sexuality belongs inside of marriage, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, we should have a high public standard about sexuality. And that, we should, and, the, and that government should discourage sexual promiscuity and perversion. Uh, that's the one view. And on the other side are those who believe in what they call sexual freedom, which is really sexual anarchy, because there's no order. They take all the order, all of the restrictions away from sexual behavior, and what happens is a, a form of anarchy, moral anarchy. And, uh, and these are the two choices that are represented in this. And, an anti-discrimination law based on sexual orientation makes uh, a person who stands up, for example, I'm a Christian, I'm a pastor, I stand on the Word of God. Uh, there are some very, very clear scriptures in the Bible. Uh, Leviticus 18.22 says, You shall not lie with a man uh, as you lie with a woman. No man can have, can, can have a sexual relationship with another man. God says, it is an abomination. Now, you might not believe that. Maybe you're not a Christian. 
maybe you aren't a Christian and you believe that with me. But the, the fact is that because I'm a Christian, that's my, that is my uh, philosophy. That is the, the, the guidance for my life. And if this law is passed, it makes me a criminal. It makes the Bible a criminal document because it discriminates against homosexuality. And this is how serious this is. And wherever you see an anti-discrimination policy come into effect, the people that suffer the most are first, the people of faith, and secondly, the children. Now, most anti-discrimination laws, when they begin, uh, they are very carefully worded to hide the strategy from the public. Uh, but here in Moldova, the, uh, the people that are pushing this apparently have a great deal of confidence that they will be able to, uh, to push the law through because they've included language that you normally don't see until much later and uh, which would, uh, would give the, the homosexuals the power uh, to be part of deciding what the, uh, the, the instructional materials will be for the students in the national school system. In other words, they get to help write the textbooks. They also get to help train the teachers in, what, uh, in their perspective, in, in their uh, agenda. And thirdly, they have the power to indoctrinate all the students in the school system with homosexual propaganda. So this law is even worse than most of the anti-discrimination laws when they're first put forward. So I want to encourage everyone who, who listens to this, get a copy of this law. You know, go to the Pro Family Association website and download a copy of it. Read it for yourself and see that what I'm telling you is true. And then you must do everything in your power to stop this law from going into effect. Uh, become uh, become a, a, a citizen, uh, a, an active citizen, someone who stands up for what's right. Stand up for the children because this is an extremely dangerous law. This, this period of time uh, that we're in right now in, in Moldova, Moldova the, this law has already been endorsed by the government ministers. They did it in secret, so, and not even the, the media uh, uh, reported it. So no one in the country knew that this had happened, and they put it on a fast track so that it went right from the government ministers right over to the parliament to be voted on. But God had a, had a hand in this, and, uh, and he brought me to, to this country without even knowing. I was invited here. We did not know that this law was going to be put into effect. But I believe this was a divine appointment because I'm one of the experts in the world about this topic. And I was able to step off the plane right into the middle of this uh, unfolding drama and was able to then uh, help the pro-family leaders here in your country uh, to be able to approach this, this issue. And uh, right now, uh, I, I predicted that, that, the, that the powers behind this law would either push it very, very fast, that would be strategy number one, is to push it very fast, to get it passed before anyone knew what was happening. Uh, but if public pressure began to arise, if the people began to become aware and to, and to start complaining, then they would, then they would slow slow down, that they would, would postpone the vote and wait until the people went back to sleep again and then bring it up and pass it quickly later. And uh, so the, uh, they did try to do this very quickly at first and then right in the middle of that all of a sudden I came to the country uh, and, uh, and one of the leaders had discovered that, this, that the government had approved this measure, uh, this, this bill. And so uh, we were able to begin immediately to start rallying people together and to start spreading the news that this was happening. And as soon as the, as the, uh, the government realized that the people knew, then they said, no, we will not do this now. We will postpone it. Now, so far, they haven't come forward to say, no, we will not pass this. All they've said is, we are going to go slower. So, uh, you cannot be uh, silent now. You cannot go back to sleep. This is, the, this is the warning bell. The watchman on the wall has sounded the alarm that the enemy is, is outside the wall wanting to come over and to change your whole country. 
and this period of time is going to decide the future of your country. Uh, if you allow this law to go forward, then everything about Moldova will change. All of your children will be indoctrinated with perversion. Some of them will become homosexuals. Many of them won't, but all their values will change. And then all of the things that are happening in the West, every kind of sickness and perversion and sexually transmitted disease and all the, the things, the bad things that you see from the West, will happen in your country. I know, looking outside, you know, being in a country that's poor and having economic struggles and difficulty of, uh, of, of finding jobs, you look outside, you see America and you see Europe and you see the good things. You see the big buildings and you see people with lots of money and all of that. But I'm telling you uh, that uh, those things are not worth the price that you'll pay in losing your children to perversion. And, that, and, and, and here, is the, here is the real choice. This is, Moldova is, is in, a, is in a, a, a transition. It wasn't very long ago you were in the Soviet Union and under the slavery of communism, and you suffered under that slavery. Today you have independence and you have freedom, and God has been able to come out in, in the lives of the people, and there has been a change, there's been a big change, many positive things. But then waiting is the European, urine, uh, the, the European Union waiting to now to try to entice you to come into its slavery. And this is the slavery of the homosexuals. Well, they will take control. And that you will trade one slavery under communism for a different kind of slavery under the far left. And, uh, uh, and all of your value system will be changed. There's a third option. It isn't just two choices. There's a third option, and that is independence under God. You know, the, the Bible said, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And if Moldova will take, that, take God at his word and accept his promise and believe his promise and stand strong and say, God, we want your values, we want your truth, and we trust you to give us prosperity, then that's the third choice, and that's the right choice, and I encourage you to take that. Now, in the meantime, uh, there is this battle that must be fought. Uh, the citizens must be diligent, they must be vigilant, and they must watch to see. Uh, there must be a constant monitoring of this law. Uh, and, I, and I met yesterday with one of the members of Parliament. He explained this whole system. The, the law cannot come up for a vote until all of the committees have endorsed it. After, after all the committees, like there are 11 or 12 committees, after each of these committees has individually endorsed the law, then and only then it can come up for a vote of the whole parliament. Now, the, uh, the way to follow this now is to monitor the committees, uh, to have, uh, keep an eye on each one of them, and to watch and see if any of the committees steps forward and endorses this, then you know that the law is moving toward that passage. And so if you watch all the committees uh, and, you, and you keep calling the members of the, of the committee, find out who on the committee are the allies who stand with the people and, and ask them, insist that they inform the people if the law passes that checkpoint toward that goal. And once that happens, once you begin seeing the law moving forward, then it's time for the people to begin rallying together. And those who have who have voted uh, in favor of homosexuality should be exposed. Those who have voted in favor of the people, in favor of, 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 of morality, they should be applauded and praised. And in this way, then you will be able to stop uh, this law from going forward. Now, the bigger problem is that the, the trend in your country and around the world is against God, and it's against the family. And so there must be a, a, a bigger strategy and a bigger vision that you must pursue. And that is, instead of just playing the defensive game, instead of being defensive in the war, uh, and that's, that's what it is. When the, the, the homosexuals are on the offense, they have a strategy, they have a goal, they have a vision for the future. And so they're always pressing forward to achieve what they want to achieve. And they're excited about moving toward what they want, the society that they want 
uh, to, to result. And our side, those who hold to family values, we don't have a vision of the future. We just react. We're defensive. And so when they do something like this, we rise up and we say, no, 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 no. And for a while we stop them. Uh, but the, 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 if, you, if you have a sports team that only plays defense, it can never win the game. It may stop the other side from scoring for a very long time. But in the end, all it takes is one goal, like an anti-discrimination law, that contains all of the whole agenda. They just have to get that into the goal, and they will win, because you have no offense. It's only defense. And once they get one score, you've lost. So what we really need is to adopt a, a, a program to, to promote the vision in Moldova and, ar and around the world of a family-friendly society of the future. And to be able to make a list, what is our agenda? What are the things that we want to achieve? And to make a list of them. We want to strengthen marriages. We want to help husbands and wives to be, to be able to stay together and to, be, to receive help if they're struggling in their marriage so that they don't get divorced. We want to help children from the time that they're young to get a picture of their future that involves a healthy and happy marriage and to prepare them along the way to become the best husbands and wives that they can be. We want to have a future society where the, where the advertising images on the billboards and on the TV uh, are not images of perversion and, and, and sexual temptation, but are images of families and wholesomeness and goodness. Uh, and one after the other, uh, when we sit down we think, what kind of a society would I really like to live in? Right? Not, the, not the, 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 the glittering picture that comes from another country of, of, of just money. Money doesn't. Uh, money is only good to be able to get the things that make you happy. But if you can, if you can become happy uh, by, by pursuing uh, virtue, and you can, then go right directly for that. You don't have to go the side route. Go directly for it. So that is my, uh, my prescription for the country. Uh, for the pro-family movement, to begin to go on the offense, to, to paint a picture of the future where the family, the, the healthy, happy family, is the center of the nation. It's the priority of the government and the priority of the law. And that you have a whole list of things that you want to accomplish that will, that will take the nation in that direction. And if you do that, and if at the same time you're diligent, to, to not let the other side score, then you will take Moldova and you will create a, a, a nation. Imagine a future in which everyone across Europe, every family across Europe, thinks, where can we take our, our vacation this summer? Ah, let's go to Moldova because I've heard that's a place that loves family. That is a, that is a place that, uh, that, uh, where our values are, are strong and and where they've created a, a prosperous and secure society by focusing on the things that are the most important. Uh, and they pushed aside all of these vices that all the other countries are pursuing. Uh, you know, that's the kind of future that, that you'd like. I'd like to bring my family here uh, for that kind of a future. So, God bless you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today.